We are on the border of Louisiana and Texas, about to fish one of the most incredible lakes that I've ever seen. Baby. Success can be in the form of a lot of different things. I think if you ask 10 different people what success means to them, they'll probably each tell you something different. Whether that be how much money you make, how many houses you own, how many whips you're riding around. But in my opinion, success is this. When you get to wake up to something like this every morning. We're just lucky enough to have this place to ourselves for three days. And it's already been an insane experience thus far. Welcome to day number two here on Caddo. Last night got a little interesting. After coming back from an amazing day of cranking on some Caddo bass, things got a little, little hairy. Huge thunderstorm came through, knocked out our power, soaked the boat. It was bad. And what was even worse about that too is we weren't able to charge the boat or the camera gear because we were in complete darkness. And on top of that, right around 4 p.m. today, we're gonna get some more tea storms that are gonna just truck us. So we really don't have a ton of time to fish today, which kind of bums me out. Luckily tomorrow's weather looks beautiful. So I'm really banking on that to be kind of our day to finish strong. But this is a weird in-between time where it's day number two and you know, we kind of have our tails tucked between our legs just based upon the fact that the water's probably gonna be muddy, the boat's not charged, camera gear didn't get 100% charged last night. So I'm gonna have to roll with the punches, but I'm just happy to be out here. Cattle Lake is probably one of my new favorite places to fish, period. Let's go crank them, I'm excited. Day number two, let's get it. This might be the only place I've ever fished where they'll have like certain cuts named, like each little offshoot to the main bayou is a pond. This was Pine Island Pond. And there's a sign as you're pulling up. It's so funny. It's like they've, they've got everything very neatly organized here in Caddo. Spot number one, let's get it. Similar conditions as yesterday. Woke up this morning, it was overcast. Only difference about today is that uh, we have a little bit better idea as to how to catch them and what to do and where to look. We're not gonna revisit anything that we fished yesterday just because we wanna keep the series fresh. I also wanna just figure out a new spot. Like yesterday was great, we caught some fish, but there could be some greener grass. And I just wanna see more of this lake opposed to keep going back to the same spot. The angler in me wants to fish it, but I know that you know, we're trying to keep everything fresh and new. So this is a little offshoot to the to the main bayou. And uh, we're just gonna see how thick we can get in the Cajun country today. Like yesterday, we have to look for that clean water, which is gonna be tough because we just got a ton of freaking rain. Fingers crossed, let's do it. Yo, that's a good fish. Stay pinned, Siski. Stay pinned. Oh, he's not that big. The eats in here are just so aggressive. Oh, had to get things started with the filthy frog. Absolutely trucked it. The nice thing about fishing back here is sometimes the fish show themselves for you. It's like you don't even need a fish finder. They'll come up and grab a, a little shad or a little minnow. Cam and I are actually just talking. We don't really know what the main forge is in here. And I don't know if there is a main forge. It's probably a mixture of everything. Bluegill, crawfish, insects, literal frogs, snakes. They probably eat just about Anything that swims. God, he's hooked so good. There you go. First bass of day number two. Good start. Let's keep going. See you, buddy. The other weird thing, too, that we noticed yesterday, and I don't know, I don't, I don't think we got this on video, and if you guys are watching this video and you're from around here, I would love for you to comment because we're really confused. On the topic of forage, we were pulling out of the bayou yesterday and we saw what we thought were crawfish at first, but they ended up being crabs, like literal crabs. And Caleb and I both saw it, so it's like, we're not insane. And maybe it's a common thing down here, but we looked it up online, we're like, does Cattle Lake have crabs? Nothing showed up. I honestly was thinking to myself, like, do the largemouth in here eat the crabs too, which would be pretty wild. There's probably not too many places where largemouth will eat something that belongs in saltwater, other than maybe like the California Delta or Louisiana. Anyway, enough chatting. First kill on the frog. Absolutely crushed. Look at this thing. This thing's getting messed up. 
Still floating and still catching though. Keep going. 25? Yeah. Here we go. There we go. That's a better one. <laughs> That's a better one. This might be one of the only <laughs> This might be one of the only times where I've thrown a frog where I can just pretty much call out the bite. It really pays off to pay close attention to what's going on in your surroundings. My first two bites today, this one included, all came because I was looking around the cypresses and I watched them eat bait before I threw my frog in there. That was just a very little boil, but it was enough for me to throw my frog over there and get the bite. That's actually a pretty good one. Maybe like uh, two and a half pounds, high twos. Uh, like just a perfect fish. Nothing wrong with this guy, he's gorgeous. You're beautiful, buddy, and you're even more beautiful that you ate the frog. But yeah, it really does, um, it's important to, to look around and watch the surface and see if there's any fish busting because it could be an opportunity for you to catch an, a nice bass as opposed to just casting blindly into the, into the abyss. Time to send you back. Fish number two. Oh, I missed it. He's a little, little. See if I can get him on the worm. That reel sounds awesome. Oh, he just ate it. That was cool. <laughs> First one on the worm of the trip. Dude, such a fishy lake. I mean, I was just telling Caleb, I'm like, it's overwhelming. I mean, none of these fish are really big and it doesn't mean that we can't stumble upon a big one today, but I had just missed a fish on the frog twice. I guess he wasn't getting his mouth around it, so I threw in a lunker log and he, he committed. <laughs> fish number three. Things are happening fast. This is good too, because we need to get on a quick bite. In a few hours, it's gonna get really disgusting. Like this is just the beginning of it. The sprinkle's nothing, but it's gonna get really saucy out here. So we need to get some fish before it gets disgusting and uh, get started on a good note. See you, buddy. Thanks, dude. Oh my God, dude. Oh my God. That was a big bass. I, I mean, I'm right on top of him. I don't know what to do here. Oh, I gotta come back. I'll come back to this tree. But that's a fish that's, that's catchable. I thought I saw a big wake, but I, I assumed it was my boat. Is that a snook? <laughs> a that was a giant fish. <laughs> oh my God. <sighs> he was running way too fast. I also just don't know what I'm doing. What's that? No, better not be. Good one, good fish, good fish. Oh yeah, that's a good one. That's a better one. Come here, buddy, come here. Stop all that, whoa. Barely hooked, barely hooked. Come here. Gotcha, oh, barely hooked. <laughs> that is the fish we want. Take a look where it came from too. We're just applying yesterday's pattern to today and it paid off. I don't know why I'm holding this like I'm fishing in the 50s. This is how, I feel like everyone who fished, bass fished in like the, the 60s just held their fish like this. Just Nice bass though, probably about four pounds. Good one. Wanted to document all the big fish we catch this trip. All the numbers as well. Four, two, five. Nice bass. First begging of the day. Beautiful four pounder. Again, look at that healed up tail. That's a fish that just got done spawning and is now guarding his or her fry. That might be a female, honestly. Really nice fish. That thing torqued on it, my gosh. Get back down there. Do your thing, girl, do your thing. Oh, we've been catching a lot of twos, a lot of ones this trip. And they've been putting the gear to the test. Like, as you know, I'm using the heaviest rod on my boat. 7.5, good and green, and they are just hammering the frog and running to the hills. I told myself early, I'm like, if I get anything bigger than that, like a four or five or six, it's really gonna put the gear to the test. For whatever reason, these fish just know how to go. For example, that one right there, I got an 8.10 gear ratio reel and I'm just cranking, I can't even keep up with them. Here we go, put it there, Caleb. Oh, actually, my other one's bloody. 
There we go, first decent one of the day. To be completely transparent, it's been kind of a rough start. As I said yesterday, we lost electricity, couldn't charge anything, absolutely dumped on us. The boat got soaked and uh, woke up this morning a little bit late, got out in the water, started to rain. We've just lost a camera, like a $3,000 camera is now broken. Try not to break the GoPro, try not to break our only camera we've got today and tomorrow to film. So it's, it's just muggy, it's wet. Is dank out here and it's really putting our gear to the test and it's uh, it's making me a little nervous while so I'm trying to focus on fishing I'm also worried about the camera gear and film a heater for you guys but we're just gonna keep trucking at some point there we're gonna have to get off the water because it's gonna get way worse than this but the sprinkles okay for now once it really comes down we'll have to dip but hey this first big end of the day let's keep going oh my god. I didn't even see him I just felt it felt him my god Sheesh. Number five, frog eater. <laughs> Absolutely crushed it. Feels so good to just change things up, go to a different part of the lake and apply our previous pattern to some fresh water. It's nuts, man. This lake is wild. I feel like you could just about go anywhere in this lake and catch fish, truly. Find the cypress, find the bass, get bit. <laughs> Buddy, I've got one request before I send you back. Tell your mama, tell your big sister, tell your side piece, the seven pounder, to please eat. We're still hunting for a giant. Okay, Jimmy. Keep eating frogs, never stop. The filthy frog is getting pretty uh, pretty chewed up. Pretty chewed up, to say the least. Here in a little bit, I'm gonna be throwing just a completely unpainted frog, I feel like. We've caught, I think, over 30 fish on the frog. That's fish number five of the day. And uh, I, as much as I wanna switch tactics and try something new and kind of highlight a different way to catch these fish, I really, truly believe with all my heart this is the best way to catch them right now in Caddo. When the water's 69 degrees, 70 degrees, when you've got a bit of overcast, when those fish are guarding fry, maybe still on beds, throw the frog. It's, uh, it's gonna work, right? Yeah, I agree. But he's talking to me. We're dipping, scramming, getting out of here. I know it looks nice right now, but uh, this is just a calm before the storm. Uh, we looked at the radar and there's like a really heavy chance of some big thunderstorms and big lightning bolts that are probably going to be crashing down here in a few minutes. So luckily we're staying in the water, so we're just going to rip back to the camp. And if it passes, we'll head back out and, uh, and keep dangling. But we did get in six fish, six fish and a four pounder. It really helped that they're aggressive, especially back here. We found some, found some pretty good trees. We can always revisit this tomorrow. Oh, and get this. Here's the real cherry on top of the uh, oh cake. We've got a tornado watch in effect. How, you may ask? I have no idea. I have no idea, but I'm not going to take any chances. We've already had like four or five tornadoes run through Texas, and uh, I don't want to be a part of that. You know, I like my boat not to be in a tree, I prefer it in the water and dry. So. We're back at camp and there is still no sign of this monstrous storm that was supposed to hit like an hour ago. Although I do think we made the right decision. I do not want to get caught out in that bayou with it hailing, lightning, and just raining. So, I don't know. And also too, I'm like kind of tempted. I'm like, well, it's sunny, it looks nice now. But I know as soon as our sorry asses jump back on the Lund and head towards the spot, it's, it's, gonna, it's gonna come in hot. It's gonna come in like a freight train. Check this out though. Presumably, this is what uh, the stumps and the cypress trees do to your boat if you're uh, not playing it safe. Actually, there's a couple over here. This must be the prop graveyard. I'm not trying to add my prop to this. You're gonna talk? Yeah. Crusty day of weather calls for some uh, creative thinking. We're in town, we found some civilization, stopped off at uh, BPS. There was some stuff that I, for whatever reason, forgot to bring to Caddo, one of which uh, was a Hummer. So we went ahead and picked up some some buzz baits along with some, uh, some toads, which I didn't even bring. So I literally went and bought some of our own lures just supporting the cause. 
and we I, I think officially now we're we're ready to, to just tear them up on the top water met a few of you guys actually today some uh, some people from Texas and Louisiana which is funny because we're right on the border so meeting a little bit of everyone and everyone has been expressing that the top water bite is legit which basically just reassures me that we're doing the right stuff so I got a couple different styles of top water some um, wake baits of course the buzz baits explode toad all that good stuff and uh, we're just gonna get all rigged up and ready to go for tonight but before we do that gotta get some food I'm thinking either seafood or Cajun I'm not really sure yet do both seafood Cajun mmm mm. 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 yummy and then we're gonna head back to camp do a little bit more fishing but off the dock and then get prepped and ready for hopefully a much nicer day tomorrow we kind of have our hands tied but we're making the most of it filming a video I don't know, we've been walking around for like 30 minutes now. Can't seem to find a good Cajun joint. Seems like everywhere around here is just McDonald's, but I don't know, we'll keep looking. Oh, we're back at camp. No more rain, no more clouds, no more tornado warnings. From here on out, we're gonna have sunshine, a cool breeze, and a 99% chance of some hungry bass. I always seem to plan fishing trips right around some absolute stellar weather. But what's good is we're back and we're on a little bit of a different mission. I know the general focus of the trip is like, you know, trying to catch big bass and explore Caddo for largemouth. But as you guys remember, probably in the last episode of this episode, however, we're gonna organize this, we caught uh, a prehistoric fish, that being the bowfin, one of my favorite fish ever. Gets kind of a bad rap, but I like them. Funny enough, there's another prehistoric fish that lives in these waters, and they're very abundant. You can find them just about everywhere. If you come to Caddo, I can almost guarantee you'll see one of these fish. And the mission that we're on now, to switch things up, we're gonna see if we can cast net some bait for this, this so-called dinosaur species. So, we got the cast net here. Got Caleb behind the camera who's a cast net whiz. And uh, we're gonna see if we can grab some shad to soak out here on the dock since we really didn't get the opportunity to do too much fishing today. We're gonna enjoy some beverages, soak some bait, and see if we can uh, get one of these elusive fish. We're out here in this little chute looking for just about anything. I have really little experience with this fish that we're gonna chase after that being gar, but I do know one thing, and that is if you can get live shad or cut dead shad, you're in business. Only thing is we haven't seen too many shad this trip, so I'm using my live scope right now, my graph, to uh, cheat here, cheater, cheating. Uh, I'm using my live scope. We had to, to use it sometime. I, I mean, we had to use it sometime. It's been so shallow, we can't even really use it, shouldn't even really use it. But today we're using it for, to find bait. We find bluegill, that also is, is fine too. Just some sort of stinky bait that comes from this water. Uh, I think we'll, we'll probably be able to catch one. I don't know if there's anything any, like big gar in here, but I'd have to imagine so. So I'm just kind of scanning around with the troll motor, looking, peeping. Caleb is going to be throwing the cast net because I am uh, quite, uh, quite. Such an awkward. Is it tough? No, I said so. You have. It's a big one. Wrong? No, you said it fine. Six is where you can put it in your mouth and launch it. Yeah, I think you did say. Ten it is where you put it over your shoulder. And the eight's in between, so and it's the awkward. In between, it's a little awkward. These these dudes live. Uh, you guys are like about an hour away. They come to Cato every spring break. We're coming up this canal because some current here. We're looking for shad for bait, and they just so happen to be here doing a bit of dangling. So I'm gonna hook y'all up with some lures, worms, craws. That'll work. Yes, sir. Sweet. Trench. There you go. Well, hopefully, you catch some fish. And uh, you know, you guys enjoy Cato. This place is awesome. Yes, yes. It's my Thank first you. time here. Yeah, of course. You guys have a good one. You too. You too. Thank you. Just bomb it. Oh, you got something. You definitely got something. Yeah. Stay wide. Oh. Oh. Dear. oh. Really? Yeah. How? Now we got something. What'd you get? Oh, that's exactly what we want. Mm. Nice job, big gizzard shed. Done. <laughs> Done. We've got bait. And a little crappie, but he's going back. 
bait acquired courtesy of Caleb. We got one singular gizzy shad, glizzy shad. That's all we need for the shot of a, of a big old prehistoric gar tonight. We're gonna sit on the dock, chill out, have a few bevraginos and catch ourselves a true life dino. And then also prep for tomorrow because uh, we still have a bone to pick with the cat on. Today kind of was rough. Rain, rain, go away. Got the lines in. Good things are happening. Now it's time for us just to chill, lay back, and wait for a bite. The reason why I actually turned the camera on is because right bobber doing a bit of dancing. And I don't think it's the bait because the bait is dead. <laughs> it's a piece of a shad, so it's not the bait moving. Something just touched it up. We've got one out there in the current, one here right along the wall. What's funny is this lake is really shallow, but this whole bayou is deep. It's 25 feet out there. And as the sun starts to set, we're seeing gar come up and jump. So I got a good feeling. So if you don't get a gar, we can at least get a catfish or better yet, gator. That's a real dinosaur. Well, that took no time at all. It just got dark, literally just got dark. We've got a fish. You know, like it's running pretty good. Maybe a, maybe a gar, maybe a catfish. Don't let him eat it. He's taking out line. Look at that. Don't want to give him any tension. That's definitely a gar. We're on, dude. We're on. It's a good fish, whatever it is. It's biting pretty good. That's a gar. Big head shakes. Let's get the net ready. I can't believe we did it. <laughs> Literally first freaking minute. Like as soon as that sun dropped, we got hooked up. That was pretty good. Don't want to give too much tension because they do have teeth. Hey buddy. Here it comes. We got a leader. Oh, it's a little cat. A little catfish. I stand corrected, not a gar, little cat. <laughs> that's cool nice not the intended target but it's pretty cool I always love as a kid this is like one of my favorite things to do is just wet a line and you know soak some bait out there for just about anything like when I was a kid I loved catching catfish bass bluegill crappie didn't matter what it was I haven't caught a catfish in quite some time Let's see if we can get them unhooked Like those dad guy. memes about holding the flashlight. <laughs> 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 Got ourselves a nice little kitty. It's not a Cajun trip without a channel cat. He's bleeding a bit, so we're gonna send him back on his way. Nice fat fish. He's looked like he's been eating gizzards all, all night. Or I guess all day into the night. Like he's biting my finger. See you dude. Peace, brother. Well that's cool. Nice little catfish. That's our actually fun fact is our third species of this whole trip. Cut ourselves a bowfin, of course, many largemouth, you know, catfish. If we can get a gar, this will be a true cattle lake send. Holy hell, dude. That's a gar. That's a, I don't know what this is, dude. It's big. Oh my god, this is big. He's like that. No, he's gone. Holy hell, this thing's big, dude. This thing's big. This thing's huge. I don't think this is something small. She's got me in the trees. Dude, this rod went screaming. I think it's a big catfish. Holy hell, boys, we're on something big. Oh my god. We are on something big. Dude! <laughs> Welcome to Cato, baby! I don't know what this is. Good luck getting this thing in, too. I just need him out of the dock pilings. Oh my god, dude. This is a decent catfish, I think. Whoa, this thing is pulling. It's a big rod, it's a 7.5 rod. Holy hell. Caleb and I were in Omegle just <laughs> on the dock because the Wi-Fi reaches all the way out here. And uh, I just heard the rod go in the, and what's even funnier, oh, there it is. I think it's a catfish. Oh, dude, it's a nice catfish. It's a pretty big catfish. Holy <laughs> hell, dude. A net. It's right here, I got it, don't worry about it. <laughs> It's a nice catfish. Oh my god, that's so sick. Dude, it's pretty big. <laughs> Holy sh dude. dude. Look at that is definitely one of the biggest channels thing I've ever caught. 
Don't look at the size of that thing. <laughs> oh, my god. oh my god! That's a big channel! That is a big channel! Get in the nuts, sister! Come on! Holy balls! Dude. I just caught that on a drop shot rod. <laughs> That's incredible. My phone is down here. I threw my phone. That's a blue channel, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it is a blue channel. Fun fact, I've never caught a blue channel catfish. Wow. Holy hell, that thing is big. Oh, yeah, look at that guy. That's a nice kitty. <laughs> uh, I'm more of a dog person, but I do love catfish. <laughs> what an awesome freaking night this has been. You know, we kind of got bummed out with the whole uh, the rain and bass fishing situation, but this... This right here makes up for all of that. Dude, it's heavy. It's probably like close to 10 pounds. <laughs> what an incredible freaking thing. All right, buddy, what do you say? Send you back? Let me go back down there. God bless it, dude. That is a meat wagon of a fish. Yes, sir. See you later. I was just get back in there. <laughs> oh, this is the beauty of Caddo. There is so much to do, so much to fish for, so much to truly experience. I would say that's a mission accomplished. Let's go. Like he's already I in. I think he's gone. No, he's not. I oh, know he's in the <laughs> boat. He's in the boat.